Hi there, it's Matthew Johnson with a basic calculus demonstration of the net change theorem. The theorem is basically the applied version of the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. Um, so check out that video if you're not familiar with what that is. Um, but the net change theorem is just about applying it. And specifically, we're going to apply it here for the volume of water in a tank. We'll look at this graphically, intuitively, and analytically using the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. And so here's the question that we're going to be working with. Suppose water flows in and out of a storage tank. The rate of change, that is the rate in minus the rate out of water, is defined as R of T equals 20 times quantity T squared minus 1 gallons per minute. And our first question, part A, is for T is between 0 and 3, is the water level increasing or decreasing? Part B question if the tank has 200 gallons of water at time t equals 0, how many gallons are in the tank at time t equals 3? So basically, if we want to kind of draw this out, we have a tank. It initially has some water in it. And water is either pouring in the tank or water is pouring out of the tank. So that's our basic setup. And let's first take a look at part A. For t is between 0 and 3, is the water level increasing or decreasing? And this is pretty easy to see by plotting out this um, rate function provided up here. So let's go ahead and bring in Desmos. And let's go ahead and plot this out to kind of get an idea of what we're working with here. So we'll go ahead and type in our function. And we're going to define the domain here also in these um, brackets as between 0 and 3. So you can see that pull up on the graph here, but before we go too much further, let's go ahead and make a point that we can move around on that graph. Now to make this point movable, we can go ahead and add this slider here for T1, and we can go ahead and define it as be between 0 and 3. And um, just to gauge our axes here, we're going to plot the rate of change of water on the y-axis, and our time is going to be down here on the x-axis. So our question was, when is the water level increasing or decreasing? And since our y-axis is the rate of change, we know that if that our rate of change function is below the x-axis, it's going to be negative. That means the water level is going to be decreasing. So between t equals 0 and t equals 1 here, that r value is going to be negative. Now if we bring this back to the beginning, we can play this and see what's going to happen as time increases from 0 to 3. But as we start, in that first minute, the water's going to be decreasing, and then it's going to cross over into increasing from t equals 1 up to t equals 3. So this kind of gives a visual indication of our answer to part A as well. So let's go ahead and pencil that in for our answer here. It's going to be decreasing for t is less than 1, and the water level is going to be increasing for t is greater than than one. Now this part A question is with regards to the rate of the water, but our part B is about the total volume of water in the tank. Now these are related, but they are fundamentally different types of questions. Now our rate is given simply by this equation up here that we plotted out, but the amount of water in the tank would actually be equal to the area between this curve up here and the x-axis. So back to our graph here, the rate is given by this function plotted. And of course, this rate is in gallons per minute, which is our y-axis. So if we can imagine an area here, it would be gallons per minute times minute, which would give us gallons. That would be sort of the units of area on this graph. And that's what we're looking for with part B. And this is basically what the net change theorem tells us. So we can d determine the net change in a quantity, in this case it's gallons, by finding the area under its associated rate function. And if we kind of want to look at what that area is going to look like, now using some Desmos tricks to shade that area, and you can see that as our time increases, that's what's going to happen. So the area here denoted in red for that first minute is going to be underneath the x-axis. So the signed area will be negative. That area here is then equivalent to the gallons that this water level over here decreased over the first minute. 
And if we move on, we can see that the area for the second and third minute is going to be above the x-axis, which we're denoting in blue here. And that area under this curve is equivalent to the number of gallons that were added to the tank over here. So this may seem a bit complicated with this um, negative and positive area, but the beauty of the net change theorem is that if we just take the integral of this function from t equals 0 to 3 minutes, the positive and negative areas will intrinsically cancel themselves out, and we'll just be left with the total change in gallons, which is thankfully all the problem to ask for up here. So we don't have to bother ourselves too much with the negative and positive. We just need to find this total integral from 0 to 3, and it'll sort of work itself out. So let's take a look at this analytically now. We'll go ahead and define W of t as the gallons in the tank at time t. Now part b wants us to find W of 3. It's the number of gallons in the tank at time t equals 3. So W of 3 is going to be equal to the gallons in the tank at time t equals 0 plus the change in gallons from t equals 0 to t equals 3. So working from this sort of general concept, we can be more specific about um, these quantities on the left and right here. So this quantity on the left, we can say W3 is equal to W0. And the change in gallons from t equals 0 to t equals 3, we could denote as W of 3 minus W of 0. Now this is where the fundamental theorem of calculus part 2, or the net change theorem, comes in because we know based on both of those that W3 minus W0 is going to be equal to the integral of W prime of t with respect to t. So moving from here to here, we use fundamental theorem of calculus part two or the net change theorem. Now we have W prime of t here, which we don't really have a function for that um, explicitly, but of course we do because that W prime of t means the rate that our w is changing with respect to time, and we know that that was actually given to us earlier. That's our r of t. So we could further define this integral as that integral of r of t dt. And we know what r of t is, so at this point we can go ahead and solve this integral and kind of come back to our general equation. So let's take that integral down here, and we can go ahead and plug in our function for r of t. 20 times quantity t squared minus 1. And taking the antiderivative of each of these terms, the antiderivative of t squared is just going to be t cubed over 3. The antiderivative of this minus 1 is just going to be minus t. And we can just bring this 20 down here. So the 20 comes out. The t squared becomes this value. That 1 becomes this value when you take its antiderivative. And of course, we're going to evaluate this at t equals 3 and t equals 0. So first thing we're going to do is take this 3, plug it in for my t's, here and here. And then we're going to take this 0, plug it in for my t's also. And we're going to find the difference between those two values. So that 20 comes straight down. And plugging those in, we get this expression. Of course, this um, just goes to 0 over here, this term. And we're left with this on the left. And you can see that 3 to the third kind of cancels out with a, th with a 3 on the bottom. So we're just left with 3 squared. So we just have 20 times 3 squared minus 3, which is just 20 times 9 minus 3, which is just 20 times 6, which is 120 gallons. So having found that, we can go ahead and plug in for some of these values here. We know our W of 0 was given in part B 200 gallons of water at time t equals 0. And now we know our W of 3 minus W of 0. So let's go ahead and plug those values in. And finally, we have arrived at our answer for part B. So hopefully you find this helpful in appreciating how the fundamental theorem of calculus part two can be used as the net change theorem for a real world type problem. And hopefully you can see how this signed area can have physical implications. Um, but either way, feel free to let me know in the comments section. And until next time, take care.